الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا بالقاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا in the name of Allah the most merciful the most compassionate may Allah accept your noble deeds during this holy month of Ramadan already one third of the month is gone and we are approaching the middle of the month and we have to seize these nights and these days this opportunity is not extended all the time we might not get it at all. Let's seize these nights and the days of Ramadan and do something positive, do something good for ourselves, for our families, for our communities. Let's focus on refurbishing ourselves remodeling our character through the Quranic recitation through reflections on the Quran reflections on the dua let's build our characters strengthen and deepen our faith through acts of charity acts of goodness and kindness to the needy, to the orphan, to the refugees, the displaced. Today we face many challenges within the Muslim community, between the Muslims themselves. There is a war going on between those who pursue the truth and justice and kindness and mercy and those who pursue their own interest, narrow interests who pursue bloodshed and destruction the forces of goodness and building versus the forces of destruction and evil. We have to do a lot of prayers for those who try to build, who try to put together things, put the community together, the ummah together. And on the mid of this month, the month of Ramadan, we are living through the an important occasion in the history of Islam and that is the birth of the second infallible Imam Al-Imam Abu Muhammad Al-Hassan Al-Mujtaba or Al-Hassan Al-Zaki alayhi salatu wassalam who was born on the second year of Hijrah after the battle of Badr Imam Ali السلام, married with the daughter of the Prophet Lady Fatima السلام, and they delivered their first baby boy Imam Al Hassan السلام, in the middle of the month of Ramadan and that was the first Ramadan where the Muslims started their fasting on the second year of Hijrah and his journey lasted for almost 47 years. He was poisoned by his wife, Ju'da bint al-Ash'ath, by the order of Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan. She worked for him. 
and she received the orders from him to poison the Imam, to put poison in his food. She poisoned him and he died in the month of Safar on the 7th of Safar, year 49th of the Hijrah in the city of al Medina al Munawwara. So he lived, he was born in Medina and he died in Medina and he lived for some time, almost five years or less, in the city of Kufa during the leadership and the caliphate of his father, honorable father, Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salatu wasalam. When Imam Hassan was born, the Prophet came to the house to see him. And the house was next door, almost inside the house of the Prophet. And he received the baby with joy and happiness, with optimism. And he chose the name Hassan for him. And the name Hassan was not a popular name among the Arab community or the Muslim community. It was not published before. People did not know about it. The Prophet chose these two names of the two babies, Hassan and Hussein. He named them. And he lived with his grandfather, Rasulullah, for almost seven or eight years, receiving the ethics and the knowledge, both from his grandfather, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet spent his time in the house of his daughter, Fatima Alayhi salam He spent a lot of time with those two babies, Al-Hassan and Al-Hussein Alayhi Wasallam. One day, the Prophet was sitting with some of his companions. His daughter, Fatima, passed by carrying the two babies. And Amir al muminin her husband, followed her to the house. So the Prophet turned, when he looked at his daughter Fatima, he turned to his companions and he said, مَنْ أَحَبَّهَا أُولَاءَ فَقَدْ أَحَبَّنِي وَمَنْ أَبْغَضَهَا أُولَاءِ فَقَدْ أَبْغَضَنِي Whoever loves those, this family, this family with my daughter, my two grandchildren, and my son, son-in-law and my successor my cousin, my brother Ali ibn Abi Talib if he who loves them loves me and he who hates them, he hates me so today if you see someone hating Imam Hussein he hates Imam Hassan and he hates Imam Ali or he hates Fatima al-Zahra and they bash them and they disrespect them as we saw with many scholars one of them is Imam Ibn Taymiyyah he slanders the family of the Prophet you can see the hate is very visible in his writings and his bias against Ahlul Bayt against the family of the Prophet so according to this hadith, he hates the Prophet. And if you love the family of the Prophet, you love the Prophet. They are part of the Prophet. They are from the Prophet. They are for the Prophet. You cannot separate between the Prophet and those four. And therefore Imam Hassan alayhi salam, when he was trained and raised by his grandfather the Prophet peace be upon him one day the Prophet gathered them under his clock Al-Kisa or Al-Ghita the blanket and then he says oh Lord this is my family those are the closest people to me he prayed for them O oh God, purify them so they could become good leaders, good example for the humanity, for mankind. And here, Jibreel descended 
with verse 33:33, Surah Al-Ahzab, ayah number 33. إنما يريد الله ليذهب عنكم الرجس أهل البيت ويطهركم تطهير. While the Prophet covered himself, Ali, Fatima, Hassan, and Hussein in his clock, he covered them. And the Prophet asked Jibreel, "Who are meant?" by Ahlul Bayt إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمَ الرِّجْسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ Who are those Ahlul Bayt? Gabriel answered that God says those who are with you under this clock those that you covered those are Ahlul Bayt Lady Um Salama a very nice lady dedicated wife of the Prophet Um Al-Mu'mineen companion of the Prophet very responsible in her service to the Prophet in her love to the Prophet she came she said Ya Rasulullah please can I join you under the clock here he said to her this ayah does not include you you may not the Prophet said to Um Salama but you are nice you are good but you are not part of this verse and this means that the wives of the Prophet were not included in this verse because the Prophet refused that Um Salama would join them but he said to her don't get me wrong there is nothing wrong with you but you are not part of this verse of a purity purification ayatul tathir those are specific individuals ayatul tathir inma yuridu allah liyudhhib ankum arrits ahl albayt wa yutahhirakum tathir imam hasan was one of them then when the delegation of Najran in the southern part of Arabia from Yemen came to meet with the Prophet and discuss with him the new religion and the divinity of Jesus peace be upon him and the Prophet spent some time with them in dialogue, in discussion, in debate and he said Jesus is not the son of God he's the servant of God he's the slave of God he's the messenger of God and this new religion is the seal of all religions and you must accept it and embrace it but they insisted on their opinion the prophet brings his children among them Imam Hassan and Hussein he was part of that delegation who stood in front of the Christian delegation. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet in Surah Al-Imran, إِنَّ مَثَلَ عِيسَىٰ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ آدَمِ Undoubtedly, the similitude of Jesus to God is like Adam. Because they said to the Prophet then, tell us who is the father of Jesus. Jesus had no father, then his father is God. Therefore, he is the son of God. And God answered them very simply. إِنَّ مَثَلَ عِيسَىٰ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ آدَمَ خَلَقَهُ مِنْ تُرَابٍ If you claim that Jesus is the son of God, then what do you say about Adam? Jesus had no father. Adam had no father, neither a mother. But he's not the son of God. Nobody says Adam is the son of God. He was created from dust. Then he said to him, Be, and it was done. The truth comes from your Lord. Don't waste time beating around the bush. You have to declare forcefully, with full confidence, with no hesitation, 
with no diplomacy فَلَا تَكُنْ مِنَ الْمُمْتَرِينَ فَمَنْ حَاجَّكَ فِيهِ If someone comes and debates with you about the identity and the nature of Jesus whether he's the son of God or not say to him let's bring if they insist that Jesus is son of God they don't accept you then tell them let's see who, who, who's telling the truth and who's lying but let's do it this way let's bring the closest people to us and put them there right in front of us and then we do mubahala what is mubahala talabu al-la'nati min Allah ala al-kadib mubahala means that you invoke God to send his curse his punishment his chastisement upon the party that tells lies upon the liars if we lie then God is going to send his punishment upon us if you lie he's going to send his punishment upon you how about this they said yes let's go for it and that was around the 25th of the month of the Hijjah towards the end of the life of the Prophet at that time Hassan and Hussein were born and they were toddlers the story says that Fatima to Zahra the, the Prophet carried carried Hussein in his arm and he holds the hand of Hassan in the second arm so Imam Hassan was able to walk while Imam Hussein was carried by the Prophet why he was carried by the Prophet I really don't know the Prophet did not want this baby to walk maybe he loved him so much so they come the following day and the delegation of the Christians were waiting there the major cardinal with other bishops archbishops priests who came from Yemen and they spoke Arabic so they were waiting just outside the city in the desert surrounded by mountains all of a sudden they saw the prophet is coming so the cardinal asked some of his aides senior aides advisors he said okay this is Muhammad is coming who are those two boys they said to him the two boys are his grandchildren Hassan and Hussein behind him was a lady who is the lady they said to him this is his daughter Fatima behind him there was a man who is this man they said the man is his son-in-law Ali ibn Abi Talib فَقُلْ تَعَالَوْ نَدْعُ أَبْنَاءَنَا وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَنِسَاءَنَا وَنِسَاءَكُمْ وَأَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ فَقُلْ تَعَالَوْ نَدْعُ أَبْنَاءَنَا وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَنِسَاءَنَا وَنِسَاءَكُمْ وَأَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ ثُمَّ نَبْتَهِلْ فَنَجْعَلْ لَعْنَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَاذِبِينَ I think this incident is not just a proof for the Christians an evidence for the Christians it's an evidence for the Sunnis too for those who call themselves Sunnis can you find closer people to the Prophet isn't this the Holy Quran in Surah Al-Imran this is not a hadith this is a verse in the Holy Quran who are the closest people to the Prophet did he bring his wives at that time didn't he have 
many wives in Medina? Why didn't he bring why didn't he bring one of them or two or three? Why didn't he bring the first caliph and the second caliph and the third caliph and Abu Fulan and Um Fulan? Where were they? They were living in Medina at that time. But then he did not bring them. The only one he brought was those four with him. فَقُلْ تَعَالَوْ نَدْعُ أَبْنَاءَنَا وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَنِسَاءَنَا وَنِسَاءَكُمْ وَأَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ ثُمَّ نَبْتَهِلْ فَنَجْعَلْ لَعْنَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَاذِبِينَ So he was bringing Hassan and Hussein, Fatima al-Zahra and Amir al-Mu'mineen, the closest people to him. When the cardinal saw the scene, he said those are his immediate family. They said yes. He said then I am not going to debate with the Prophet. I'm not going to do that. Because had he brought his companions, his wives, I would have been ready to debate with him. But because he brought the closest people to him, it means he's a truthful. He would not jeopardize the life of the closest people to him. This means that Muhammad is a truthful. And I'm not going to debate with him. And by God, if we debate and we fail, This valley that we stand in, in the middle of it, it is going to be engulfed with fire, inferno, that consumes us. And I am not going to do that. So, he refused. He refused to debate with the Prophet. And then they left back. They went back to Najran in Yemen. But then he came, the cardinal came, with some of the archbishops with him, as Sayyidu al Aqib. They came back to him, to the city of Medina. They stood before the Prophet. They said, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad al Rasulullah. They accepted the message of Islam. Imam Hassan was one of them. Among those were the Prophet put right before him in his debate with the Christians. The Prophet used to say about Imam Hassan alayhi salam, Hadani ibnai about Hassan and Hussein, those are my two children. Allahumma inni uhibbuhuma, my Lord, you are my witness that I love them. Wa uhibbu man yuhibbuhuma. And I love those who love Hassan and Hussein. He said about them, Al Hassan wal Hussein rayhanataya min ad dunya. They are the sweetest thing to me in this dunya. The dearest thing to me in this dunya. My favorites. al Hassan wal Hussein, Sayyida Shababi Ahl Jannah. They are the masters of the youth of paradise. al Hassan wal Hussein, Imamani in Qama wa in Qa'ada. Whether they assume leadership, they are Imam, or they don't assume leadership, they are still infallible Imams. Imam al Hassan was so smart. He used to go to the mosque at the age of six or seven or eight. And then he used to listen to the Prophet, to the sermon given by his grandfather. I see sometimes some children, when we give sermons or speech, some of them at the age of five or six or seven or eight, they pay attention. Imam Hassan used to go there and pay attention. And he would memorize what his grandfather says. And then he comes back home at the end of the service. He comes to his mother and he tells her exactly what the Prophet said. So she would be aware of her father's speech. 
by the time Imam Ali السلام, comes home Lady Fatima السلام, she tells him exactly what her honorable father the Prophet وسلم, said in his speech Imam Ali tells her how did you know about it she says this boy Al Hassan السلام, he is the one who is inform, informing me about my father and what he said in his sermon some of his characters Imam Hassan السلام, was full of kindness and generosity Kareem wa Ahlil Bayt Kareem Ahl al Bayt. He was Kareem and generous and kind with his wealth, and he was also kind with his manners. With his manners, too. He was very kind. And Imam al Hassan السلام, used to travel to Hajj from Medina to Mecca almost 25 times. with his brother Imam Hussein next to him. They would walk this distance. They would walk while they had the means of transportation. There were camels at that time to carry them. But they refused. They said, in this journey, we prefer to walk to Mecca, to the Kaaba. We'd love to walk. And this was the tradition of Imam al Hassan, Imam al Hussein, and Imam Zain al Abidin alayhi salatu was salam. They would walk. So when the people of Medina on their way to Hajj, when they see them on the road walking, they ask them, they say, please join us, you have to ride. They tell them, no, don't worry. We have means of transportation. Actually, they, they had many camels, a caravan walking with them, but they refused to ride. And in certain times, they had to go from side roads to avoid the main road. They did not want people to be embarrassed because many people, when they see Hassan and Hussein walking, they would disembark and they start walking with them. But the Imam tell, tell them, you don't have to walk. Continue your journey. When Imam Hassan السلام, used to come out of his house in Medina and sometimes he would sit there outside. People gather around him from different walks to the extent when they gather around him to see his face because his face resembled the face of the Prophet His manners were the manners Akhlaq Rasulullah the manners of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He represented the Prophet. When the people loved to see the face of the Prophet, they would look at his grandson, Al-Imam Al-Hassan Alayhi Salam. And the road would be blocked because there were many people gathering there around him to see his face, to listen to him, to watch him to enjoy his shining face, his bright face, his light, his knowledge, his wisdom. People of Medina enjoyed the presence of Imam Hassan among them. He experienced very difficult time. I'll leave some of that for tomorrow, inshallah, to speak about some of his achievements inside Medina, what he did for the people of Medina, and why he was very popular among the people of Medina through his generosity. I would mention some stories in the next session, and also we would mention, inshallah, some of the challenges the Imam faced. And one of them is the animosity of Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. Imam Hassan السلام, succeeded his father, Amir al Mu'mineen, in the leadership role in the Khilafat when his father was assassinated in the city of Kufa in the year 41. So, Imam Hassan, the Muslims accepted him and paid allegiance to him 
as the caliph but then he was defied by Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan and ultimately Muawiyah his arch rival and arch enemy ultimately draw a plan to get rid of Imam Hassan to poison him and to kill him we will speak inshallah in the next sessions about other manaqib virtues and characters of this master this leader the grandson of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the son of Amir al-Mu'mineen and Fatima al-Zahra may Allah bless you all we thank you for following us we hope to be able to continue with you inshallah in the upcoming sessions till the end of the month of Ramadan from here the beautiful city of Karbala near the beautiful shrine of Abu al-Fadl Abbas and next to him on the other side the holy shrine of Al-Imam Abu Abdullah al Hussein. My greetings to you and my thanks and my dua. May Allah bless you all. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.